Finally I can breathe, she said, and ran around the wet paths, cut to symmetrically by a new, devoid of a sense of nature gardener, whom my father asked in the morning if the weather cleared up, she ran around with an enthusiastic jump, controlled by a variety of feelings, which aroused in her soul the rapture of a thunderstorm, the power of a healthy lifestyle, the absurdity of my upbringing in the symmetry of the garden, and the desire to protect her purple skirt from dirt, which she managed to splash so much that the maid was perplexed and in despair from the height of the spray, was not familiar to her. If grandmother was making circles in the garden after dinner, then only one thing could drive her into the house, she, like a midge, was drawn to the lighted windows of the small living room, where bottles of strong drinks stood on the card table, and at the moment when she, having made another full turn, turned out to be under the windows, the voice of my great-aunt was heard, Bartilda. Forbid your husband to drink, cognac. In fact, to tease my grandmother, she was very different from the rest of my father's family, and everyone made fun of her and pestered her. My great-aunt encouraged my grandfather, who was forbidden to drink strong drinks, to drink a little. The poor grandmother, entering the room, turned to her husband with a plea not to drink, cognac, he got angry, still drank a glass, and grandmother left sad, confused, but with a smile on her face. She was so meek and kind that love for her neighbors and the ability to forget about herself and the offenses caused to her were expressed in her smile, whose irony, in contrast to the smiles of most people, applied only to herself, but she sent us a kiss with her eyes, when they were directed at those who aroused tender feelings in her. She certainly had to caress them with her eyes. The torture to which my great-aunt subjected her, her vain pleading and her weakness of character, doomed to suffer defeat and vainly tried to take away a glass from grandfather, all this was one of the phenomena that you get so used to that in the end you watch them with laughter, more moreover, quite resolutely and cheerfully you take the side of the persecutor in order to convince yourself that there is, in fact, no persecution here, but then I was so disgusted by all this that I would have gladly beaten my great aunt. And yet when I heard, Bartilda, forbid your husband to drink, cognac, I, already masculinely cowardly, acted as all of us, adults, act at the sight of injustices and insults, I turned away from them, I went upstairs to weep, right under the roof, into the room next to the classroom, where there was a smell of iris and into which the fragrance of wild black currant poured, growing among the stones of the fence and stretching a flowering branch through the open window, having a special, more prosaic purpose. This room, from which even the tower of the castle of Rosenville lay pins could be seen from afar during the day, served me for a long time, of course, because only there I had the right to lock myself with a key. A refuge where I could to indulge in what requires inviolable solitude, where I could read, dream, bliss and cry. Alas! I did not know that my grandmother was much more upset than the minor violations of the regime allowed by her husband, my lack of will and poor health, which inspired her anxiety for my future, when, with her head on one side and looking up, day and evening, endlessly circled around garden and her beautiful face, her wrinkled, brown cheeks, which in old age became almost lilac, like arable land in autumn, hiding in the air under a raised veil, with tears running over them from cold or from sad thoughts, unbidden, immediately drying up tears, then disappeared, then appeared, 